Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'll lead you step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. We're really getting towards the end now of grade four theory, we're making great progress. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. They're available in US letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. There's also a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also access information about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guidebook, how to take your ABRSM Music Theory exam and it's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to best make use of the time when you're actually in the exam room and starting to work on your exam paper. So if you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find it all there. If you can give me a like, that'd be fab, and subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's loads in store. And so let's press on now, and we're going to look at section L, which is page 43, and just talking about the instruments of the orchestra. So if you turn with me to page 43, and also if you turn in your PDF document to section L, you'll find a little bit more information there as well. There's no writing to do in this section. I'll just pop L there so you know that's what it's referring to. And really it's just a matter of doing a little bit of revision here just to get to grips and start to familiarise yourself with some of these instruments. It's a bit tricky if you don't play in an orchestra or if you don't play any one of these particular instruments. It's a little bit abstract to begin with. However, if you just spend a little bit of time uh, just glancing through this list and it shows you the main groups of the orchestra, the strings, the woodwind, the brass and the percussion sections and then there's a brief description of what clefts they use. I've just rewritten that list into perhaps a bit more of a user-friendly list here and so you can see that they go from highest in pitch to lowest in pitch in each brass family, woodwind family, string family and so on and also I've shown which clef is used by each instrument right next to it so it's all together in one place. Um, of course it's perhaps best to think about each instrument family in turn. So let's just think about the violins and the strings. The violin is the highest instrument in the string family. The double bass is the lowest instrument. The double bass actually sounds an octave lower than it's written, so it transposes down an octave, so that's something to bear in mind for future reference. And also be aware that strings can play more than one note. It's called double stopping when they play two or three notes together. After that, the woodwind, the brass, can only really play one note at a time and so they'd be playing single notes. The flute is the highest in the woodwind family and it goes lower to the bassoon which is in the bass clef. Just out of interest the clarinet's a transposing instrument and so we'll be dealing with that in a later grade. Um, the brass family here, I've just added in cornet, that's not an orchestral instrument, that's the brass band alternative. The trumpet is the orchestral instrument, that's the highest brass in the orchestra. The cornet's just in the brass band sort of genre. And then um, we've got the bass instruments of the trombone and the tuba. If you want to, you could perhaps just look up um, and find some images of those. If you find pictures of those, it'll help you to just retain them in your mind. And then we've got the percussion family. Basically, percussion is sort of instruments that you hit. It's as simple as that. So the glockenspiel, the tubular bells, the xylophone, you can play tunes on all of those. They, they would play melodies. Uh, sometimes they can be having two sticks in each hand so you can get some quite complicated melodies out of those instruments. The timpani it's classed really in this tune because you wouldn't really play a, a melody on it but it would have sort of perhaps a, a tonic and a dominant note. You would tune it to perhaps two notes so you get that bass line there. Untuned percussion, percussion oh, excuse me, is uh, you know like drum kits 
sort of things with no tune they are for rhythms only so it's just a matter of taking a little bit of time and becoming aware of what each of these instruments are capable of and then that will also lead into the next um, section in this book where we're going to be looking at some of the notation performance directions relating to these instruments so if you can just take a little bit of time but don't stress about it it's not that you're required to have this vast orchestral knowledge just start to get to grips with a little bit of general knowledge that's all really there we go then so um, they will crop up in the later exercises too so we will be revisiting this information as well I do hope that's helpful to you. I hope you can make use of this list here in your revision. Uh, if you can give me a like, that would be really encouraging to me. And subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more to come. And please do visit SharonBill.com to make use of all the resources available to you there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.